The year was 1940. President Roosevelt watched with rising alarm as Nazi Germany rolled through Northern Europe and forced France into capitulation. America was preparing for war, adding more than a million men to its armed forces and transforming its economy. But it lacked a nerve center to direct the massive effort. So the Department of War proposed a plan for an enormous structure which could house the expanding bureaucracy. They selected a location just outside of D.C., a stretch of federally owned land in Northern Virginia along the Potomac River. The site was bordered by Arlington National Cemetery to the west, and to the southwest, the black community of East Arlington, also known as Queen City. Queen City had roots. The first families moved to the land in 1892, after the federal government closed Arlington's Freedman's Village, a camp for freed slaves founded during the Civil War. By 1940, some 200 households lived in the neighborhood, around 900 people, alongside small businesses, a trolley stop, and three churches. Some residents had even built their own houses. George Vollen, born and raised in Queen City, had founded a fire department there. While Queen City was poor and lacked certain amenities like running water, it was a real happy, solid community, said Vollen. The contract for the construction of the Pentagon was awarded on September 11, 1941, and an ambitious 24-hour construction project began the same day. The undertaking required nearly 700,000 tons of sand and gravel, and over seven times the amount of concrete used in the Empire State Building. Up to 15,000 workers worked on it during a single shift, and the pace only increased after Pearl Harbor catapulted the U.S. into the conflict. Queen City was deeply involved in the war effort. Young men from the community had enlisted, while others, like George Vollen, worked for the Department of War. They watched the buildings rise with curiosity and had no idea their lives were about to be turned upside down. We just thought they were going to build a building over in the field, Fallen told the Evening Star decades later. Then they came to building the roads, and that's when they took all the houses. In February of 1942, the federal government announced that Queen City would be demolished to make room for a series of highway interchanges that could transport war workers to and from the Pentagon. Residents had to vacate by March 1st, less than one month. They protested for more time and compensation, sending a letter to First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and with her help, getting a hearing before the House of Representatives, but to no avail. Construction started before many had even vacated their homes. And on April 17, 1942, the War Department burned Queen City to the ground. For the residents of Queen City, the displacement was devastating. But for some who worked on the project, the demolition of an entire black community was a positive good. Highway planner Jay Downer claimed that one of the big points of the road network was that it required destroying the slum triangle. This plan takes out some troublesome darky slave cabins and cleans up that strip. Homeowners received up to $2,052, while renters received nothing. Some residents moved in with family members, while others were resettled in two trailer park communities in Arlington, which endured for years after the war. The Pentagon was completed on January 15, 1943. 40% of the workers who built it were black. It was the largest office building in the world, housing 33,000 workers who helped guide the U.S. to victory in World War II. But for the residents of Queen City, it wasn't enough to give their lives and labor to the war effort. They were forced to give up the community they had built, too. For more DC history, visit our Boundary Stones playlist and subscribe to WETA PBS on YouTube.